What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Crown Cinema Podcast. In this episode, we literally just watched Monkey, Monkey Man. Man. I thought it was an awesome movie. Okay. That is not a good sign. All right. <laughs> Just getting right into it. Okay. Right. Greg, give us your review of Monkey Man. <clears throat> Listen, it's just... Uh, man, how do I go about this? Well, to put it in perspective, I think I've made it pretty clear that I'm just not like the biggest John Wick type of movie lover. It's just not me. Um, I mean, it's fun. It's cool. Lame. Yeah. To you. Everybody else, too. Not everybody okay. else. I I definitely know some people that were like, wow, John Wick movies aren't as good as I thought it was going to be. And I'm like, you know, that's Women. okay. Women say that. No, I've heard plenty of guys say it. I I, I hate to rain on your parade here. Okay. I mean, I thought, okay. I thought the movie was... I get it. I thought the movie was okay. It was an okay movie. What do you rate it out of 10? Whew. You know, these ratings, <laughs> you know, because they put so much work into these movies. How low is he going to go? I'll give it, I'll give it like a 5.2. Oh, shit. A five. All right. That's pretty low. That's pretty low, but you know, it's just not really my style. But I mean, there were, I mean, obviously there were parts that I enjoyed. So, yeah, you know, and we'll get into it. But yeah, 5.2. I thought it was an awesome movie, but I do have some criticisms for it and I'm not going to give it that high of a score mainly because I feel like it was too fragmented throughout it the spoiler alert new movie spoiler alert we're going to spoil this a lot in this movie that's what we do this episode I mean but I felt like there was a lot of fragmentation with his origin story I think it being spread out throughout it you weren't really feeling as tied to him you didn't really feel his pain as much you just kind of saw the pain affecting him yeah and I, if for me, whenever you do that kind of fragmented, uh, that flashback where it's kind of just scattered throughout the movie. We good? Sorry, I was turning the fan on. It's kind of getting hot in here. Oh, it is getting hot in here. Yeah, it's about to get a lot hotter. Um, I don't know. Like, it needs to kind of... I, for me, I would enjoy it more if it leads up to kind of like a bigger plot twist yeah. or something rather than it being just you know, exactly what you think it is. Because if that's the case, I'd rather just the movie kind of, you don't even have to like break it up into bits and pieces. You don't have to necessarily do it at the beginning, but you can just show it all at one point and like kind of show the mission and like, you know, as sick as it is. And it's obviously, it's terrible. I mean, his mom gets beat and choked and then essentially like burned to death, yeah. which is brutal. It's just brutal. But, you know, you hype it up that much. <laughs> I'm just, I don't know what to really say that I was expecting, but I kind of just expected it to have a lot more to do. I don't even know. I mean, obviously, it's the whole plot of the movie is he's getting revenge for his mother. I just, I wish they could have, like, planted a seed deeper where it, like, That's meant That's what more. I think, too. That's my biggest thing is that it, that fragmentation of it throughout it, it's like, yeah, he, he, his first time of getting revenge against the guy that killed his mother. You don't even know oh, what he did to his mom. Get out, out. <laughs> Foxy's coming through the studio, sneaking in the back. Like, if you're gonna do something like that, you need to make the guy his dad, or some no, kind of. That's kind of cheesy. That's cheesy, but like, you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, you just kind of give it more of like a plot twist where, like, you really you're like, oh, let's fuck this guy up. Yeah. So that part of it, I didn't feel that bought in a little bit. I was kind of. Wishing I could see the origin story a little bit sooner than I did to maybe make me buy in and really feel his pain and watch his revenge and be like cheering his ass on. Um, but I think the cinematography was cool. I liked a lot of the imagery with like the old Indian, Which I, yeah, love uh, that like too. folklore kind of thing. I, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but again, I, w I was hoping it, hoping it would be a little bit better. So my rating, I'm going to give it a, I'm going to go 7.6. Damn. Damn. You thought mine was low. I mean, I don't know. This is just kind of your movie, so right. a seven point six is I. That's pretty low, like yeah, on your scale. Right, this yeah. isn't my kind of. So, all right, Scott. Scott loved it. I'm gonna give it an eight. I, uh, I think the action scenes were awesome. I kind of yeah. like the way it unfolded, like where he's getting the flashbacks 
I like the the sequence where he gets the flashbacks and has to leave the restaurant. Um, cinematography was grungy but still beautiful. Um, good soundtrack. Yeah, soundtrack was good. Yeah. I like yeah, I like the fragmentation too in the beginning when he has to leave the restaurant too. Like that was up to that point, I'm like bought into the movie for sure. But then us just it, it continuing to go and us not knowing it and just seeing fragments the whole time. Us as the audience, we don't know what he's hiding in his head. So like those flashbacks don't really mean much to us. We like know something happened. We kind of infer that these police officers probably killed his town, but we haven't seen it yet. We don't really know why it's so impactful to him. So I just felt like I wasn't that bought into his revenge plan. And even some of the planning that even happened, it kind of just happens without much planning. Like whenever he goes with the transgender temple and then they all team up to go fight at the very end. They never, you never hear them talk about it. They just show up. You're like, oh shit. Oh, cool. Yeah. I guess they're they're fighting too. They kind of go off of that. I mean, yeah, like the whole no planning. I kind of made a joke in the theater when we were watching it, you know, because he goes back a second time into the restaurant and he's a total badass. I mean, he goes full John Wick. I mean, he's using everything around him to like beat the shit out of these guys, kill them, everything. And it's, it's badass, but it's also just like, all right, I get it. It's a movie, but like, did he really acquire these skills? By just beating the shit out of a sugar bag at a temple. No, but think about it. He's the monkey man. He's been getting his ass kicked all the time, so he yeah. has so much fight experience. And I get that. That's but... like one thing that maybe saved that point of like, how could he be that badass? But he's been the monkey man. He's been getting his ass kicked fighting for money for who knows how long. Yeah, and he was like, he was selling those fight. You know, he was like going down in the third, right. like that kind of thing. So I get that. But I'm just saying, he does attack the the chief of police like before the training, but he's also like been a fighter and he gets his ass whooped. But I guess like he just wasn't prepared. I don't think he had like a plan. He didn't have any guidance. It was just pure revenge. So yeah, I guess that, you know, that does make sense that it just doesn't go well the first time, but like the fighting style, you know, complete, he's a completely different person. The second time he goes back in the restaurant. Yeah. You could maybe think about it just as his, his, whole mind has shifted from just being this scattered fighting for pain yeah I and think he just kind of narrows everything down to focus towards one mission yeah it must That's have been that the, acid yeah that acid trip got him that was yeah. a cool sequence i like that that was really cool when he opens his chest opens his chest and you see the depths of his soul yeah i, I fucked with that that was cool that was yeah it was like a interesting trip sequence like you don't expect a psychedelic trip sequence to happen in the middle of monkey man <laughs> when you're watching it no, but I guess in a way, like, you could see it because it's a very religious movie. I mean, it talks a lot about God. I mean, just it's it, the whole idea is pretty much based on like religious beliefs. Yeah. Like, people are fighting for power and they're using in the name of their God. In the name of their God. Yeah. So, like, you could see, which I enjoy that, you know, I, I like that they put that in there. Because that has so much to do with it. Because if he was just a regular kid whose mom didn't teach him about God, like he would, I mean, he probably wouldn't have ended up being the best guy. But he believed in a bigger purpose. Yeah, and he and loved so, that. He felt like he was that. Who, who man? What was it? Human, human, a man? Human, uh, uh, yeah, whatever it was. He feels like he's that human? monkey he- hero. Uh, Hunaman? Yeah, hun, hun man, hun, hun man, hun man, hun man. <laughs> <laughs> we should stop. Oh, no. no, this is just showing like oh. all evolution. God, I don't know, but yeah, because he feels drawn to it. Because that flashback happens so many times when things happen. Oh, it just popped up. Uh, Hanuman, Hanuman. the Hindu god of wisdom, courage, and devotion. There you go. Yeah. That's this guy. That's yeah. That's Bobby. Is that is that what he says? That's what he says his name is because I don't think he wants to tell people what his actual name is. Yeah. Because I think another good, speaking of that another good thing I really enjoyed about the movie is at least in the beginning I I noticed a lot of times where they did a lot of great examples of show of showing versus telling. Like he lied and said his name was Bobby, and instead of him being like, you know, him just acting badly to like see, make him seem like he's lying. It immediately turns and shows the Bobby's bleach. He just like quickly made up a name on the spot. 
there was something else where I, I can't think of all the examples, but there was a lot of times in the beginning where it very much showed you what was happening versus telling you like the, the shots of the cinematography relayed the message where you, you can pick it up easily by inferring it. Yeah. Which is a sign of a good uh, filmmaker. Yeah. I think this is his debut. Dev Patel's director directorial debut. It is. Yeah. So I felt like in that case, he, he did great. I agree. He did a good job on a directorial debut, but I think it's, you can kind of tell it's maybe his first time. Cause I think I f- just feel like it wasn't as good as it could have been. I felt like there's a lot of potential in this movie that it could have been really fucking good like really good but just the way it was told didn't didn't get me there yeah but you know he does know how to make a pretty fucking badass action scene definitely i loved like how the music would play during some of those action scenes yeah like the music that's in the elevator or in the club yeah they had one scene where it was like super slow like he's like killing people Mm -hmm. and it's like really slow music because he's kind of like i feel like that's showing him in the zone. Like you see him well, in the zone. It's because I think it's like kind of flashing back to it's like kind of on the same rhythm of whenever he's punching the sugar bag and the guy's like doing the drums right, right, right next right, to yeah. him. He's like getting back into that zone. Yeah. And so I mean that just like gives him a better balance where like it is cool. I did enjoy that. Like in the first attack on the restaurant, I mean, you could tell he's like nervous, fidgety, like he he's still really he can't gain full control over his conscience. Yeah, because he like, hasn't really, he hasn't, he's not allowed himself to see the trauma he's happened as a kid. Like yeah. that, that psychedelic obviously helps him get through it, And but he's like fighting that emotion the whole time. So he yeah. doesn't really, like he's fucking just bundled up rage with no direction. Yeah, and I think whenever he points the gun at the chief of police, who that's who he's trying to get his revenge on, you know, the entire movie, I think there's just like a, conf- a conflict of character there because he's got the gun, he can pull it on him, but I think that, to me, I interpret it as, like, this can't be how I do it. You know, this guy deserves a much, much worse. more. Yeah, not even much worse, but, like, it has, this has to be significant to me. I can't just kill this guy in the restroom with a single bullet, yeah. you know? And so, like, it's it, probably scary when you've been dreaming about this for a long yeah, time. Yeah, because he's, he's so obviously not afraid to kill him. But he's like, I've been, look like... I've been seeking this revenge my entire life. And am, am I really about to just lose, like go through this moment just this quickly? Yeah. And so that was what the hesitation was. It wasn't because he was scared to pull the trigger. He popped the dude in the bathroom like right. immediately. Yeah. yeah so yeah. it's just like he's looking at him and I just, it, he, he did really well. Like, cause he doesn't have a lot of lines. And so when you're playing that kind of a character, like, Everything changes about the way that you put your character on the screen with just like facial, like what you do with your eyes. Like he's con- like at the very beginning of the movie, he's always just like looking around like his yeah. eyes are constantly darting back and forth. And I think that's showing that he's like kind of unsure and he, he's unstable and he doesn't understand his surroundings as well. Yeah. He's just not comfortable. In, he's not in touch. Really, he's just right. he's just so angry and so. But then, he's so angry and he's so out of place in the in the place he's working yeah. at. Like these aren't these are the people he despises. Yeah, and he's working for them yeah. and working with them. And so he's just out of focus, you know. And so, but then once he goes to the temple and they kind of guide him along and help him deal with his trauma, he comes back, and I mean, cool as a cucumber, man. Mm-hmm. I I think that action sequences were really cool, but I think. A lot of times it's a little too shaky at moments. Like I, I was wanting there to be like a moment of just like, like let us see the action for a second. That happened a few times, but I wish there was a little bit more times where you kind of like, not a break from the action, but at least like get your bearings for a second for the audience's sake yeah. to like watch the fight and then go back into the shaky cam. Well, so what I'll say to that is that I noticed that a lot at the beginning. And again, it kind of goes back to showing like he is unsure of like his moves, his plans. Yeah. So like I remember in the first, attack on the restaurant super shaky like yeah pretty much the whole thing and that's because like he just yeah he has no plan no game plan but then the second one i mean he's smooth he's like on the bar top like one shot very smooth like taking on three guys like not as much shakiness but like it's i think that's done on purpose is what 100%. I'm trying to say. yeah it 100% was done on so, purpose and i totally get the point but yeah. just as a viewer watching it i wanted to see a few times where it would like 
give us a little bit of space yeah. just to get our bearings a second because a lot of times it was super shaky. But there's a lot of cool, like, it almost seems like he, like, played with the camera as almost like a character sometimes because mm-hmm. there's, like, a there's a moment whenever he's escaping. I think it's, though, it's a, when he first attacks the police chief at the club mm-hmm. and he's running away. It's from his point of view, you think, and it's running up and it looks over the edge and it sees a police and you think it's his point of view, but then it turns and he's up the stairs. Yeah. So it's like, this guy's fucking on the move. Like, he's yeah. like, you think he's still one step behind, but he's even one step ahead of what you think. Yeah. He's fucking panicking. He's running, getting, getting the fuck out of there. That was one thing that I did appreciate about this movie because I've just, I've, I've always thought this about pretty much every action movie that I've seen like this, where the main character is taking just an unreal amount of just like, blows to the yeah, face just damage like just so much damage and i love that when he's on the escape every time he takes a hit it seems like the camera gets a little out of focus a little shakier because it's showing that the character is fucking on the verge of just getting knocked the fuck out yeah and i love that because like dude he is just a man you know you yeah. see like the jason Bourne movies where yeah. like he can take a thousand punches <laughs> yeah. and then he just gets up and he like he's still good to go yeah, like fresh like i love the realism in that. Yeah. We're like, this dude is getting hit by cars. He's getting hacked by bats and hammers and axes and everything. Yeah. And like every blow, like he's on the verge of just like unconsciousness. Yeah. I enjoy that because like that just makes it a lot more realistic because aside from the second restaurant attack, I thought it was like pretty doable what he did. Like the first one, the second one, obviously that's just like total badass going to beat the shit out of some dudes and he can do it pretty much with ease at this point. Yeah. But the first attack, I loved it because I was like, you know, if it's just like some tough, bloodthirsty kid that just is used to getting his shit rocked all the time, he could do this. Yeah. You know, he could take on like a few guys in a bathroom and then like get away from the police, especially if he knows like the town he's in and all that. I enjoyed that. It was like, you know, this is this really isn't that unrealistic. Yeah. Going back to your John Wick reference, that's what a lot of people enjoy. Specific, like, I enjoy this too about the John Wick movies is that he gets beat the fuck up and he's like limping and he's like having trouble fighting because he's gotten his ass kicked so bad. It's like yeah. that, that realism of John Wick is what is really cool about those action sequences. But with him being ki- getting his ass kicked all the time as the monkey man, I wanted to see too. I kind of expected this, but they didn't. Maybe they kind of inferred it. That's what the filmmaker was trying to say, but I didn't feel like it was that portrayed, or I guess, no, I'm, oh, that's not the wrong word. I think it's the wrong word, but anyway. They didn't show us enough of him like being able to absorb the damage because he's been a fighter, getting his ass kicked on purpose, losing these fights. I want to see like some Rocky Balboa stamina of him just like being the one that's the toughest yeah. because of his career being the monkey man. What does Rocky say? Like, doesn't matter how hard you can hit. It matters how hard you can get hit. And keep moving and forward. Keep moving. <laughs> yeah. I think that's Rocky Six. That's like one of the shittiest Rocky movies. But the most <laughs> badass speech of any of them. But yeah, the action was good. Um, again, just that, the way they told it, I didn't, I thought it just could have been a little better. Agreed. Like I said, I, I, I've spoken my piece. They, just, think- they hype up the the trauma and like it's just you're it's gonna break it up, up yeah. in, into bits and pieces like that. I see what you mean. It's fucked up, but then like when you see it, you know it's fucked up, and when it happens, you're kind of like, okay, yeah, okay. That, 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 well, that's exactly what I thought it was gonna be. Yeah, yeah. So like that's the only issue. Like I knew it was gonna be fucked up. Like you see the flashes of the ring that's bloody and it's like choking a a human, and you know it's his mom. Yeah, and then you see the fire. And all this, so you're like, okay, I, I get it. Like, it's it's going to be terrible. But, like, maybe there's going to be more because, like, he's pissed. Yeah, it wasn't so. as brutal. I mean, look, look, getting beat, you watching your mom get beat and brutal. then choked and then burned brutal. to death is brutal. But, but you movie ex- standards. You expect her to get fucking, like, beat the fuck and her, like, her face is probably all jacked up. And then she, like, screams when he burns her. Like, you're, you want... You expect it because it's the Monkey Man, bro. It's a pretty violent movie. I'm thinking like Quentin Tarantino. And you're going to be like, up, you know? oh my God. Yeah. Because what, what was it? There was like three times in the movie where he was like, oh. Yeah. Oh my God. 
There were some, there so were some expect, brutal deaths in this movie. So you there expect was, the most brutal death to be the mother. Yeah. I totally get where you're coming from. Yeah. Right? But damn, okay, so on that note, I think we both know what our brutal death was. What? Like the, the one that we were like, oh. oh Which like, one was it? That elevator. With the, the fucking knife, knife. The knife just slowly, and he fucking. With his mouth. And he. <laughs> if you haven't seen the movie yet, and you don't care to get this spoiled, he like literally takes a knife and just slowly pierces it through a guy's neck as he's trying to stop it. Yeah. And, and then, then he does stop it with his, with his hand. Yep. And then he just. Like he, halfway out of his neck. Yeah. Oh. And then he goes up with his mouth, grabs a knife with his teeth, and just fuck, jabs it back in. Ugh. Yeah, that. I think that one got like a reaction from everybody in the audience. Oh, the another movie. one. I, I was trying to think about this one. The axe accidentally going into that guy's neck. That one was pretty fucked. Poor like, guy. Oh, yeah. But then I I remember like right before it happened, I'm like, dude, this is, it's a whorehouse. And there's this guy who's so obviously like methed out. He's got, he literally has meth mouth and he just runs into a room with an ax and just fucking like, and no, and nobody gets hurt immediately. And I was like, okay, come on. Like somebody would talk. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought that was pretty good. Like that was kind of done on purpose, I think, because it was made for somebody like me where I'm like, Dude, he just ran into a room full of like 30 people yeah, swinging, swinging an axe. Nobody gets hurt. Like, how could this pot? There it is. Okay. Yep, okay. Gotcha. Yep. All right. Thank you. Drop the ball there. Yep. Thank you, Patel. Um, in the whorehouse, I did appreciate the fact that they showed this, you know, dark underworld of just like, you know, whorehouses and, you know, prostitution and stuff, but they didn't hypersexualize it and show us all these unnecessary sex scenes. Just, to sell it for and put it in the movie for no reason. Yeah, you show you show like four girls briefly. Yeah, yeah it's just like doing you, the it's bits. in passing and you know it's there and you yeah. you make note of it, but yeah. there's not like just literally just putting it there just to fucking sell the movie. Like poor things. Yes, bro. Like poor <laughs> things. <laughs> yes. We get it. <laughs> she likes to have sex. All right, <laughs> Jesus Christ. So I appreciate a movie that you know. Is not trying to just overly sex it yeah, for no reason. You don't have to overdo it. They're really, I mean, this movie definitely did not do that. Um, it's just, it's weird for me. Like when we watched Poor Things, which is an episode that we did, what, that was like two episodes ago, three episodes ago? Three. Yeah, three episodes ago. And it's weird for me because normally in a movie, like sex scenes, just, I'm like, you know, we can, we can get past this. Like I, I understand. But then I watch a movie like Poor Things. And like an hour in, I'm like, okay, I'm I'm used to it. It doesn't even bother me anymore. But like, if something like that had happened in this movie, where like it's just out of nowhere, if it's yeah, if it's like two hours of just (laughs) barely anything, and then all of a sudden like he starts getting it on with the prostitute, like after the second attack, I'd be like, wait, we don't have to do this. Mm -hmm. Like this, I mean, this really doesn't have much meaning. I uh um, so again, good job, Patel. I yeah. get it. Yeah. I thought there might have been a love interest with that prostitute too that worked at the the top club. I think there was just like a level of respect. What so he understood the tattoo just because that bird was a bird that resided in the jungle that he lived in when he grew up. It had nothing to do with her like knowing where he comes from. I don't know. Do you know Did y'all Scott? pick up on that at all? I thought it meant something. Yeah, because she had like, there's obviously a connection there, but it. I mean, they never explain it really. I don't think. Yeah, I just thought it was what you just said. Yeah, like it. So she probably came from the jungle. I think that's all. Like, I don't know. yeah, she probably came from that jungle. That's why she ends up kind of siding with him. Right. She secretly hates all these people. Unless but she lied. What kind of bird it was to that guy? Yeah. All right. I thought it was cool in that scene when she did lie about the bird, how he fucked up with the wine glasses and poured the red wine into a white wine glass. Been there. And she like distracts him and pushes the red wine glass toward him. It's like, hey, fix it. Like, I'm going to distract him. So you you get that, you know, they're going to be tight. And then she comes through at the end. But you expect a love interest. But again, I think with the fragmentation, you have his backstory, you have him getting revenge, you have the monkey man fights, and then the 
transgender temple, you have like so many storylines that you really can't even work in a love interest because it's kind of already a little busy. Yeah. And again, I, I don't think it's a love interest. I think that she probably just respects him. Yeah. Because it, it came from the same like place. I said, yeah. Cause I think she comes from the jungle. I think that's kind of what it's implying. Yeah. But she doesn't have the courage or the willpower to do what he's doing. But it's very obvious, like, especially after he goes after the chief of police, it's like, okay, like, I understand. Like, I, I hate these people too. Yeah. Like, you know, so like, I, I'm definitely on your side. I'm just, and he probably doesn't, too he, scared. yeah, he probably honestly doesn't respect her because whenever he, whenever she saves him, he kind of just looks at her, kind of like a little bit of thank you and then walks away without really much recognition because he probably sees her as somebody who sold out and is doing this stuff for the money. Because he, he he said he wanted it for the money, but he really wasn't doing it for the money. Yeah, no, he was, he was, absolutely. He was scheming from the from the get go. Yeah, no, I, I I get what you're saying. I didn't take it that way. I think it was more of like, if you weren't doing this, you would just be sleeping on the streets, like you see so many people doing. Yeah. So it's like obviously everybody just had to choose. Like, I guess you he sleep is on kinda, the street yeah. or just yeah. It's like I understand. Like this is a terrible fucked up world that we're in right now. Yeah. Like you just got to do what you got to do. Like, and this is what I'm doing. Yeah. Thanks for the help. Like you still, you know. I think if the movie started off with uh, maybe a brutal scene at the beginning with how his origin story was, and then it cuts to him as the monkey man when he's standing there with his mask on, looking like a badass. Did anybody else think? Oh, I'm sorry. Th- nothing. That I thought. was gonna say that would have been. Sorry. That would have gotten you to really want to see his pursuit, and then you can start to see how he's scheming. Because like in the beginning, he's scheming, and you don't really realize he's scheming. Which I guess does like because he he. He knew from, as a child, the logo of that matchbox and the name of the guy. Mm -hmm. And so it's a cool, that could have been the kind of the twist is like you realize as a kid he knew what he was going to do. But if you would have maybe seen that in the beginning, it would have like been a little bit better throughout. What were we going to say? Nothing as thoughtful as that. I just, uh, when he went on the, (laughs) the, the second attack on the restaurant and he pulls up with the monkey mask on did anybody else think that he was just gonna like do all of that with the mask I on? i was really hoping so I'm like he took it off way too early he did he took <laughs> it off before he even attacked the first person i was like all right at sim- least kill the entrance with your fucking mask, like, mask okay bro. symbolism like at least kill two guys and then like look at the camera with the monkey mask on what was the point of even putting the monkey mask on they gave it a whole montage he like cleaned yeah, the mask he bleached it. Oh, oh he bleached it it's because of that whatever that parade is, everyone's wearing masks and stuff. But, oh, but I do okay. agree that he should have worn the mask for like at least a little bit. A little it, bit. <laughs> okay, so he like the, he could have pulled up out of the elevator after he's killed those two guys, and then like he pulls out and like the the chief of police is looking at him, and then he takes it off. Yeah, and it's like motherfucker, like yes, he's still like, bro. Come on, kind of shit the bed there. Because he could have done it. He's be, already used to fighting people with the mask on. Yeah. Like, okay. So it makes sense that he's wearing it for the parade to, to disguise himself, and he bleaches it white in honor of Hun Hunman Hunman. We can't. Oh man. Hunman. Hunman bleaches it to look like him from the stories. So you want to see him as that fucking just Hindu for a little God bit? I totally understand. I totally understand. He can't go into like a party full of people, enemies. And, like, just try and beat the shit out. Because, I mean, peripheral, you know? Can't see everything. That's what I'm saying. I, <laughs> like, he could, he took out the two guys in the front door. Well, he fought a fucking seven-foot motherfucker with the mask on. So he can pre- probably handle himself. He, he definitely has the experience. That's why I was like, oh, shit. Like, this is about to get real. That's why I, I, I think the elevator taking the mask off and they... Because they know who he is. He he was marked as a terrorist. Yeah. You know, that's no slight crime. Like I mean, everybody's he walks in the gonna... kitchen, everybody's like, oh, fuck, there he is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, if he was a monkey, they would have been like, what the fuck? Dude, that's what I'm saying. I, I think it, it had so much potential because imagine, like, the last scene when he's about to fight off, it's the fucking monkey sitting there, and the guy's like, oh, fuck, what the fuck is that? Uh, and then he just takes it off. That mask is scary, dude. It was. Because it's, it's almost hard in the... Cause I it's feel a good like mask. There were sometimes I felt like in the ring when he's like 
not that much. I guess it's just one scene at the end when he kind of like turns his head at the seven foot guy. He's like, what the fuck? It's hard to think it's funny because the mask is so scary. <laughs> like it's hard to see into his soul and or not. See, I mean, not in his soul to see like under the mask of him, like being like, oh my God, where it's like kind of like a funny moment. Yeah. Because the mask is just so like brutal. It's a, it's a badass. Yeah. I think it's cool though. Like when he's in the ring, the final time, like when he's like actually beating the shit out of these guys and like all the shots of him, like, I mean, they're just badass shots of him in the ring. Like, I mean, he knocked the dude out the first time, then he shows mercy on the second guy, but he did beat the shit out of him. Like that to me is like showing truly like who this character is on the inside. Like he is that dude, like with the, I mean, he is the monkey man, but like it's showing his character like yeah. throughout the whole thing. Yeah. Like he's a fucking brutal person, but he does show mercy, mm-hmm. you know, so. He is brutal. There's so many shots of him God, doing. He caught, he caught a lot of bodies. There's a lot of stuff with showing him like in gross sort of situations. Not really gross, but like he's, there's a scene when he pulls a gun out of this like disgusting toilet. With like, there's like blood on it. It's like gross, but he like sticks his hand in it. No worries and grabs it. Think about it. He's in that water. It looks like shit water. I don't even know how that really, God, I, first thing I thought of whenever he like got sniped off the roof and then just ends up in sewer water pretty much. Look like it. I was just like, I mean, that's going to get infected. 100%. They just took the bullets out and burned it. I was like, I don't know. I think that would require a lot more medical attention. Than just some monks in a temple. It looked like shit water, but I don't think it was. It was like a flowing r- river. It's probably disgusting still, but I don't think it's actually shit water. It could I be. I don't know. It I thought like it. I thought I saw like a a sign, like kind of saying like this is shit water, dirty water. <laughs> yeah, like I, I thought I mean, it for like a brief second. It was the shot of him looking up is definitely looked gross. Yeah, yeah. I, I expected that scene to show the scene of him. And what happened to his mom? Mm. When he's in the, he like looking up. He's, and he's looking at the light. He's the water with his hands and yeah, yeah. Just too fragmented for me. Where it's just kind of, I wanted to see it up front. I want to see some badassery up front. Or not badassery. I want to see the brutal brutality up front, and then so the badassery can come later. I mean, you did see the shot of the fire burning in the in the police chief, but you don't know what it is, right? But yeah, that's something. what. Yeah, you can, I did. You can definitely, yeah, that's what I'm saying. you infer what happened, but you don't Yeah, feel. that's what, you know, and that's pretty much, like, just my whole point is, like, okay, I, I it gave us so many fragmented bits that I was like, okay, I think I know what's going to happen. So then whenever they actually show it in full, I was like, oh, I was right. Like, I, I had this figured out, like, an hour ago. Yeah, because, like, I feel like the beginning is so good with the fragmentation and seeing him like his pain boil over you're like damn like what is he what happened to him and i feel like right after the in the right after probably like 30 to 40 minutes let's see what happens yeah show us the brutality is it is it like that because they're repressed memories maybe like there's got to be a reason that we don't know everything right yeah I mean, I, oh, so maybe that's just how he kind of remembers it. Like, yeah, like he doesn't remember everything until he takes, takes the, the acid. psychedelic. Yeah, maybe. Oh, maybe. Shit, that's a good point. Yeah, but that's a good point, and that would make sense. I just think watching it is not as good that way. Fair. But you're probably right. Yeah, that's probably a good point. It was all just you, because the movie seems like it's mostly from his point of view, kind of. So you're seeing definitely you're. He's getting these flashes of shit and he doesn't know what it's from and he's like fucking really angry about it. <laughs> Fuck it. Fuck gotta, gotta take his tie and his vest off. Shout out to uh I guess like his manager who has the badass <laughs> the guy's a homie. Dude's just got a Batmobile, like hopped in the vehicle with him as he's getting shot at. I didn't get that. I didn't understand why he did that. I guess he really loves that car. But I was like, damn, like, why would you get in a car? You just signed up to be a, also a terrorist. There's like 10 cops shooting at him, like, in the parking garage. And then he was just like, wait, <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know why he did that. 
And then he and becomes, he's like, fuck, man, fuck. <laughs> it's like, what did I do? And then he just becomes an associate. Yeah. Didn't do anything. He was just trying to get his car. <laughs> Didn't even get his car. He's watching the news and it shows the guy as a terrorist. And he's like, oh, fuck. And his associates, it shows him. He's like, <laughs> oh, fuck. I was like, you did not have to do that. Like, he wasn't your friend. He just won you money. And they became fight. homies quick. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously. I just, I didn't understand. When he hopped in the car, I was like, why? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He really, he, I mean, he did love that that vehicle that was a funny that was a funny scene too when it shows off that car for the first time that showing was, yeah. the all the fancy cars and it like sits on that Lamborghini it's like you like her I call her Nikki yeah he's like what and it cuts back to the fucking scooter yeah. Nikki Minaj <laughs> we say a lot of bumper nice headlights or something something like that yeah <laughs> <laughs> something like that yeah yeah but I just think it had a lot of potential but just kind of let me down a little bit. I came in this, dude, the trailer made this thing look insane. But I just think he might have just like direct your debut on like a pretty intense story and he's also starring in it. Gotta be a challenging feat to make it, you know, good. Yeah. I wonder how much the script was changed from it. Like if he cut it up differently from the script or just the way it, the way it was. I'm gonna see this quote. Yeah. From him. Let me read it. Yeah. Um, speaking of his work on the film, Patel stated, I think the action genre has sometimes been abused by the system. I wanted to give it real soul, real trauma, real pain, and I wanted to infuse it with a little bit of culture. Eh. <laughs> That's the transgender part. But, th- but that was like such like a little... <laughs> I wouldn't know. <laughs> that is the Indian part. I think the Indian that part too. is what he's talking about. But I, I heard him say something too about like he wanted to make it like right now's culture too. Yes, I, don't know, I get that. I just the part that <laughs> the part that I'm like kind of laughing at is like the real trauma, real pain. I feel like they do a pretty good job with that with a lot of action movies, especially like the revenge plot. Like they always, to me, it seems like the character always like has a pretty good reason for killing like a hundred people i mean the last one i saw was silent night <laughs> and uh <laughs> i don't think that had <laughs> okay that had good revenge real that soul. was a revenge yeah there's no real soul in that like because like john wick that one's kind of meh the the real so there ain't no real soul in that one he just you killed my dog yeah there's trauma in the beginning that there's, there's trauma in the beginning then it just goes jason Bourne taken like but jason Bourne's really really good though I fucking love Jason Bourne. And that has real trauma because he doesn't know who he is. Have you seen those? When I was a little kid. Dude, you got to rewatch them. They're God, I got, I almost got my brother in trouble whenever I was a little kid and we walked out of a Walmart and I saw like a Jason Bourne DVD and we're just walking out of the parking lot. I was like, take me back in there so I can get my Bourne movies. <laughs> and it sounded like porn. <laughs> he was get like, my- shut the fuck up. <laughs> That's funny. Um, but yeah, I did enjoy it though. This movie. Netflix. That's probably yeah. Sorry, Scott. What's up? Netflix bought it for thirty million, and then wasn't gonna release it because it apparently felt the film was too gritty for Indian audi- audiences. Really? And then Jordan Peele saw it, and uh, then he released it in theaters. Shout out Jordan Peele. Shout out Jordan Peele. That's cool. What a too gritty for Indian audience. Yeah, but it's not like a it's an Indian story, but it's not made specifically for an Indian audience. I uh, you know maybe maybe it is. I mean, I, they all they all speak English. Yeah, like if it was an Indian movie, they would have been spoken in Hindu or or whatever language. Yeah, I don't get that part. Netflix lame. <laughs> and Dev Patel's like an he's a British. <laughs> That's two thumbs down from Kate Harvey. Fuck you, Netflix. I'm just kidding. <laughs> actually, I think Netflix is actually like a... They're stepping it up. Uh, yeah, I think they're actually a uh, pretty good company. Like, they actually take care of their people. They pay well. They give comedy a platform to host their stand-up specials on, which is cool. They don't censor, really. That's crazy. Because I remember watching the trailer for this movie, and it 
and me being so hyped for it. I was like, holy fuck, dude, this is going to be my new favorite movie of all time. But I don't know. There's probably a lot that, like when he's talking about like Indian culture, that sort of thing. I have no shame at admitting that like we probably are missing out on so many references right. to that culture. Yeah, for sure. So, hey, let us know in the comments what we're missing because it's probably a decent amount. Yeah, because cause like, I don't know, but maybe the Hindu god, monkey man, what's his name? Huna man. Huna man. Hanuman. Hanuman. Maybe in the beginning, you're supposed to kind of know who that is already, or at least kind of know the legend legend a little bit. Because mm-hmm. we were like waiting to find out right. what that means. And like, yeah, there's there's probably a lot that we just missed, which yeah. is fine. Yeah, okay. Just, it, it was a complex story that I think could have been interwoven a little bit better. Yeah. So that's why I gave it a seven point six. Five point two. But again, I'm open to hearing criticism on this episode. By our Indian audience. Hey, I'm this sure, is good. We sure got to do a RRR next. Yeah. Like, just let us know what we must be missing out on. Because I, I remember, like, when the movie ended, I was like, okay. I, I'm i sure I missed out on a lot right there. Mm-hmm. So, but I'm okay. Yeah. I, uh, I was kind of almost expecting a little bit more of... I honestly... Uh, Halfway through, I'm like, well, this is an Indian story, so I wonder if they're going to add a little bit of Bollywood flair. There were some cool stylistic shots, but nothing like Bollywood style. I mean, they made it pretty clear that this was going to be like a John Wick type of movie. They even made a John Wick reference in the movie. Yeah. When he's buying buying the gun. Right. And the guy's like, oh, I saw this in the John Wick movie. Yeah. Same gun. Yeah. So I saw that and I was like, oh, this is, okay. It's just, it's inspired by John Wick, but interweaving like a different culture than what America's used to. Yeah. Which I enjoyed that. Yeah. I felt sometimes like when he got that revolver gun from that guy and then the puppy brings it to him. That that was badass. That stuff, that was badass, but you expect that at the end when the plan's coming together. Mm. I think. Because that's a cool part. He trains this dog, does his thing, but I just feel like it's kind of rushed over. Like it's almost like goes by too fast. Like, all, all of a sudden, he already got the gun, and he's like, oh, sweet, Is there, he's already going to attack the place? Yeah. And then he does, and he fails, obviously, but it kind of just happened too early, and things I just felt were a little rushed sometimes, where I thought there could have been, like, a slower buildup to make it just this fucking intense action at the end. I just, I, I'll kind of disagree there. Like, when he gets the dog to show up, I remember, like, when he gets the gun, and it, because he's very, like, his breathing, he's just... <laughs> like very shaky and I think he's kind of just he he has a plan in his head but I think once he actually like has the gun and he gets in the restaurant he's like oh fuck okay yeah. alright like here we, here we go like now it's kind of just uh, not but it, not even that he goes to the top club yeah so I think he he thought that he probably had like a pretty good plan yeah put in place and then then you realize you get there, you're like, oh fuck, wait. Yeah, uh, what he's got do? he's got the gun. He's like, oh shit, it's real. Okay, like today's the day. So I, yeah, I I kind of like that. I found out the Netflix thing. What is it? So apparently, India is like one of their top markets, mm. or their most, their biggest, and uh, they were afraid people were going to get offended by the right wing Hindu nationalist character in the film. That the whole point of that is them beating his ass. I, yeah, probably, I don't know why they didn't want yeah. to lose it. They won. That's silly. There was something else recently I heard about where silly. I don't, I can't remember, but there was some other movie where there was a <laughs> there was some other movie where there was like a people were offended by I can't remember the stories. I'm sure I'm going to be talking very vaguely. <laughs> I'm just skip this. Was one. it the interview? No, 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 no. I think I want to say it was recent where it was a movie where people were offended by the fact that they were showing this side of the story, but it's like, yeah, but they're also beating this. Oh, nope. It was in a book I was reading. That's what it was. Ed Zwick, he did like Legends of the Fall. He did Blood Diamond. Mm, he yeah. did uh, uh, Glory. Some other ones. 
really good movies, but he wrote a book about like his process through Hollywood and filmmaking. It's a really cool book to read. And he kind of gives like film, he gives a bunch of filmmaking tips throughout it, but then talks about just his story and throughout it. And people were offended by, I forget, oh, what, can you pull up his movie list? I want to see which one it was. But a lot of people were offended by the fact that he included some characters in there that had this certain point of view. He's like, yeah, but we're, oh, it, he did a movie about terrorism in America before 9-11. And a lot of like this Islamic group is really offended by the fact that he showed these like Islamic terrorists attacking America. But there's also characters that were Islamic that were not terrorists, obviously, like just normal people, mm. like like everybody is. And so people were getting offended by the fact that they were showing terrorism through this Islamic people. He's like, yeah, but this happened. There was some other bombing like this happened. So and I'm showing also normal people that are also Islamic. So he wrote this like giant letter to them saying like, you are stupid. Pretty much that'll, said that. That'll, calm him, that'll <laughs> yeah. calm him down. Yeah. He wrote something better than that, obviously, but he pretty much was like, you are stupid. What's the director's name? Ed Zwick. Z-W-I-C-K. Oh, The Siege. That is The Siege. Okay. All right. You have any final thoughts, Mr. Pittman? Monkey see, monkey do. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have that one <laughs> teed up this whole time? Nope. Nope. Pretty impressive. Not really, but... <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there's no point. Like, there's no correlation to what we just saw. Yeah, it does. Does it? Monkey see, monkey do? It does, because he saw Hunnaman. Nice. First try. <laughs> Beautiful. Monkey see, monkey... No, well, he wasn't a monkey at first, then he became the monkey. Then he was monkey see, monkey do. Then he died as the monkey. Did he? He was staring at the... That's painting. right. That's right. He does. Or did he die? Is there a Monkey Man 2 <laughs> coming out next year? Nah, dead as fuck. Yeah, they should probably just let it be. <laughs> no sequels for this one. No. It was good, but again, I feel like it could have been better. Okay. 5.2. 7.6. 8. 8. 8. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Comment below your thoughts on Monkey Man if you've seen it. Thank you guys for watching. See you next week. We're out. Well, I've been working like a dog trying to buy my next.